Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Matter River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome back to another one of our fly fishing tutorials. And today we're gonna talk early season steelhead and in particular stripping and swinging streamers for steelhead. We've got head steelhead guru of Matter River Outfitters, Josh Trammell with us today. So Josh, uh, first of all, welcome back. Thank you. It's good uh, to be back. You've not been in the lower 48 states for quite some time. Yeah, I think I got back four days ago. And you were in Alaska for a couple of months? <clears throat> yep, since August 1st, so that was about two months or so. Wow. Mm -hmm. So how was Alaska? It was good. It yep. was good, yep. yep. It was a little, little cold there towards the end. It's snowing up there right now, so I'm glad I'm here <laughs> instead, of, uh, instead of up there. Well, that's Alaska, but, mm -hmm. uh, well, welcome back again, and uh, now it's time to start thinking steelhead here in Ohio, Pennsylvania, throughout the Great Lakes. Uh, of course, many of you know Josh is uh, uh, one of our top guides, if not our top guide for steelhead here in the state of Ohio. He's chomping at the bit, ready to get after him. In mm -hmm. fact, you were out just the other day. I got back on Saturday, and I was out Sunday morning. <laughs> that's a guide. Right there for you. <laughs> no other life outside of fishing. We've talked about high sticking, we've talked about eggs and nymphs mm -hmm. and fishing under indicators, uh, almost ad nauseum. And this time of year, in fact, we're dealing with early October, getting into mid October, uh, is an excellent time of year for some different techniques. Mm -hmm. And it's probably the best time of the year for throwing uh, streamers. Yep. Larger bugs. Um, for either stripping streamers or swinging streamers, and um, which is something I really love. I mean, once once the water cools off and the fish, their metabolism slows, they've been in the river for a little while, we switch over to the eggs and nymphs. But when they first come in and they're super fresh, they tend to be a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm, definitely. And more likely to chase a streamer. So just wanted to touch on that. Why don't you just talk a little bit about that and then we can talk about your rig. We'll talk about my rig, touch on some lines and some flies and uh, hopefully inspire some, fo some folks to get out and throw some streamers at Steelhead early this season here in Ohio, whether you do it on your own or you hire this guy through Matter of Her Outfitters. Uh, tell us a little bit about your rig, man. Yeah, so um, there's basically kind of two ways that you can do it. Um, what I brought with me today is just my regular steelhead setup, just a floating line on a seven weight, 10 foot rod. You know, that's typically what we'd use for uh, like an indicator setup, something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, this time of year, you have to be pretty versatile. I mean, if you look at most of our flows, I mean, we're we're under 50 CFS for, <sighs> for most of our stuff. Yeah. So you got to be switching between eggs and nymphs and this this technique that we're going to be talking about today. Having this rig and a variety of different flies and stuff like that is is going to be beneficial. So like what we were doing the other day, we ended up getting most of them on nymphs. I carried this rod with um, just my regular floating line, just a nine foot one x two x liter something like that, mm -hmm. and you just tie a small streamer directly to the end of that, and I'll just put one or two split shot depending on where I'm I'm fishing. You could complicated just a little bit more you could use like a sinking poly leader or like a like a little sink right. tip or something like that um the conditions that we've found right now and the conditions that most of the time you find in the early season you don't really need it just right. a split shot or two um because a lot of times you're seeing the fish mm -hmm. you're trying to target with a streamer as it gets a little bit later um, and we actually start getting some rain and some water and you're not seeing a whole lot of fish then an intermediate line or like what you've got there that sinks a little bit a uh, little bit quicker um, will be better for for targeting them and covering water and even throwing those bigger flies and keeping those right. underneath the surface. So you're <clears throat> so you don't have to go out and buy right. something new. Um, you're just using your 10 foot seven that mm -hmm. you would high stick nymph with, and it, just the same floating line you would high stick nymph with. Yep, exactly. And you're just going. You're probably changing up the leader a little mm -hmm. bit. It's more of a contact leader instead of a non-contact leader. Yep. No big deal there. You're just going to swap that leader out, and you're going to say something like a one X tippet, and a, a long leader because you're dealing with low clear water. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as opposed to using a sink tip, which would be more my inclination, you're just putting some split shot out in front of the fly, or the fly might even be. Yep, yep. Weighted enough to get down. Because we're just dealing with, I mean, a lot of times you're just dealing with little bathtub size buckets. Yep. Like or, where, where we mostly were finding them were, I mean, holes that you would typically know you'd fish in 
the peak season for steelhead. Um, there's little buckets and drops and shale cuts and things in those, mm -hmm. and that's where you're going to find them in the deepest possible stuff. You're going to going to do a lot of a lot of walking, and that's one nice thing about streamer fishing is you can cover a whole lot of water yeah. with it rather than picking little bits and pieces apart with uh, with a little indicator rig or help even like a dry dropper rig and stuff like right. that. Right. Are you mostly swinging these flies or are you stripping them as well? It depends on the situation. Uh, like right now, there's not a whole lot of current. Like it's it's literally just a look at like a little trickle. And so you're going to have to strip it. Going to have to strip it. Yep. So I, I will stand above where I think or where I know the fish are mm -hmm. and cast at a quartering downstream angle. So that way that little bit of current will still push that fly from bank to bank but I won't get a, a, a swing necessarily like, like you would in the later part of the season, like when we do the two-handed rods and, and right. stuff like that. But it's still swinging across, but I'm, I'm giving it some action while stripping it as mm -hmm. well. So I can cover the water, keep that thing off the bottom, keep it right in front of their face. Right. My approach w would typically be a little bit different, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little bit different in the fact that when I'm steelhead fishing, uh, being somewhat of an old guy, I'm usually in a boat. Mm -hmm. So I can have my indicator rod rigged up, right. and then I can I can have a specific streamer rod right. set up. I, I might even have three rods in the boat. I mm -hmm. might have a tight line set up. I might have an indicator set up, and then my streamer set up. Right. So of course, um, I'm using the Echo Streamer X. Uh, I, I think it's probably still to this day the best streamer rod in my estimation ever made, of course, in Kelly Gallup's estimation as well. <laughs> um, but the Streamer X in a, a nine foot seven weight, uh, I much prefer throwing streamers on a shorter rod because that, you know, it, streamer fishing is down rod fishing, so I can benefit from having the rod. I mean, you can obviously do it with a 10 foot seven mm -hmm. weight, so you don't have to go buy something new. But if you're gonna target uh, steelhead on streamers, you might wanna think about uh, moving what happened? Mike fell off. How'd you do that? I don't know. Uh, steelhead on streamers. Been gone too long. Yeah, right. I don't know how to work in society, right? Yeah. <laughs> Man, it takes time to adjust. Yep, it's like it getting does. out of jail, really. Pretty much. <laughs> you know, a short, I prefer a shorter rod for streamer fishing. Again, mm -hmm. if you only have one, you can do this with ever, whatever rod you have, right. really. Um, so, nine foot seven weight streamer X. Um, and in the low clear water, sure, a floating line is fine. Uh, another line I like a lot is the Cortland Ghost Tip, an intermediate, you mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. The clear intermediate tip, it's a little more stealthy. It doesn't sink quite as quick. Right. You know, I, I, I think a lot of these aggressive, very aggressive sinking lines that a lot of people are buying these days, like the Titans and the Predator lines from Rio, mm -hmm. um, they're just too much. For, yeah, they, they make a little whole lot more commotion, Yeah, you know? Well, and they're too much. They sink too quickly. Right. And they're too long a heads. I mean, for example, um, you know, if if you've seen me fish streamers on the Madison with Kelly and the guys out at the slide in, we're fishing 30-foot Kelly Gallup heads. Right. There's no way you could fish that line on our, on our streams. No, so you have to easy. adapt your lines a little bit. And I prefer something less aggressive like the Cortland, if you're gonna fish a sink tip, the Cortland Streamer 10. It's not super overweighted, mm -hmm. it's not super heavy out front, it's just a good old fashioned, um, you know, fairly true to line weight sink tip. Um, but a, another couple of lines, once the water does come up a little bit, mm -hmm. a, a couple of lines that I've used over time, the Airflow, um, Streamer Max Short, and then Scientific Anglers has just come out with a, a great new line in their Sonar series, and this is a five foot sink five tip. So it's, it's gonna be perfect. We've had lines like this in the past, but this is a new offering from Scientific Anglers. But having that five foot tip really allows you to guide that streamer down into those mm -hmm. bathtub size holes. Right. And, and whereas even a 10 foot or a 15 foot tip, or for God's sakes, a 30 foot tip, <clears throat> you just can't fish those, it's way too much. But that five foot tip allows you to guide that streamer, whether you're swinging the fly or stripping the fly, 
into those little buckets and little, like you said, those ledges and stuff. Right. So a, a much shorter sink tip, a much less aggressive sink tip um, is typically what, what I would use and would recommend for folks. But let's, let's touch on flies. Let's see some of your favorite flies for doing this. Yeah, so I mean, like conditions right now, I'll go super, super tiny stuff. Like this is just a little shiner imitation, like, like what Pat tied the other day, um, like, right. like that tying video that he right. did. Right, I'm sure there's a link right here, a link down there. Pat just did a little, real simple emerald, emerald shiner pattern mm -hmm. uh, that we use. Another little simple one, just some dubbing and, and rabbit on there. Don't have to go crazy for those little tiny things. And the cool thing about most of these that are unweighted, you can put them underneath an indicator too when, when the time comes and you can drift them. Um, just little dungeon type patterns. So I, I tend to stay away from like super, super crazy colors in the low water um, and go more natural like a, like a goby or a shiner or mm -hmm. something like that. So blacks, olives, and whites. Um, these are, I'm sure you've, you've seen these things before, right? I've, I've heard about that yeah. fly. These are, these are pretty cool. I like them. Called like a, uh, what's that called? Um, Blaine Chocolate's Game Changer. Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. We love tying these things here. Um, I would not throw this right now, given right. the conditions, yep. but this kind of stuff, bigger game changers, these leggy boys, like a regular feather game changer, like drunken disorderly, stuff like that with deer hair. Um, that's stuff that I would throw on like those deeper sinking lines when we actually get more water mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. Well, some of the, some of the flies <laughs> that I've traditionally used, I mean, we've been using these flies uh, from back in the days when I was guiding, back mm -hmm. in the 90s. Uh, Jerry Darkus was here yesterday and we kind of reminisced mm -hmm. about uh, when we used to fish like you do, um, uh, <laughs> the, the Lake Erie tributaries, and we'd be out early season. And um, this is just a, a little glass bugger. D isn't gonna spook the fish, it's not overly big, right. um, and, and tends to get their attention. Um, and then the emerald shiner type stuff, like some of the things you have. This is a little mm -hmm. flashier, but a little, again, a smaller profile. Um, I forget what this fly is called, but uh, I'm sure there's a link right there. Um, just some flash minnows. Mm -hmm. Again, essentially imitating the emerald shiners, just trying to get their attention. I've, I've, I'll fish this fly in, in low water and in high water as well. Definitely. And then once the water comes up a little bit, uh, something a little gaudier, just a, a flash minnow, mm -hmm. you know? These things get their attention, especially when the water's dirty. Another one I've done well with is the, um, I think it's called the Laser Legal by Kelly Gallup. Yep. It's a version of his Barely Legal, but in more of a micro size. Again, we kind of get that uh, emerald shiner kind of coloration right. on it. And this is a good pattern for low water. One of the go-to flies for us over the years, as is for you in Alaska, mm -hmm. is just a good old fashioned purple egg sucking leech. I carry that in purple, I carry that in black. And then uh, for heavier water, the rabbit strip version. So I never go steelhead fishing without those, just a traditional favorite. Uh, both Good one for sure. Any, any place for migratory fish, mm -hmm. um, here, Alaska, wherever. So that's, that's kind of my Lake Erie steel, uh, st streamer box. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that pretty much covers all the bases for me. Uh, although I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna tie up some of those, put those in my box for sure. There you have it friends, uh, early season streamer fishing for steelhead, just a slightly different approach. Uh, when the fish come or just come in, they're a little bit more aggressive, a little more feisty, a mm -hmm. little, little fresher, a little more prone to chase down a bait fish. Uh, it's a great time of year to fish. Um, you can fish with the gear that you have already, or you can fine tune your gear and, and streamer it up. Uh, and the flies are not complicated. As always, you can, you can tie some like Josh does. You can buy some at Mad River Outfitters. I'm sure there's links down below. So. As always, uh, again, glad to have you back. Yeah, Looking back. forward to a great steelhead season. Uh, you can learn more about Josh Trammell and the guide services that we offer here through Mad River Outfitters and the Ohio Fly Fishing Guides, of course, on our websites, which there are links down below in the description. And uh, if you have any questions on, uh, about booking a trip with this guy, you can pick up the phone and give us a call or shoot us an email here at the shop uh, he'd love to fish with you. I definitely would. You got a couple of dates open, I think? Yep, yep. A yeah. little bit in November, a little bit in December. 
Yeah. Awesome. Not too early to think about spring, too. Not too early to think about spring. We're always booking steel, well, steelhead, smallmouth, pike. Everything, yeah. I mean, this guy does it all, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, check it out at madriveroutfitters.com or Ohio Fly Fishing Guides. Come fishing with him. And as always, we appreciate you watching. Let us know if you have any questions and stay tuned. And be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode. We appreciate you. Check it out at madriveroutfitters.com. The new Mad River Outfitters Campfire Mugs make coffee taste better. <laughs>